J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Pinch Me. <laughs> You know, one secret of planning a successful meal, ladies and gentlemen, is to finish with a flourish, with a really swell dessert. In fact, that's one reason so many people like Jell-O, because it always winds up the meal in a grand style with a burst of color and a touch of rich, lingering flavor. Take cherry Jell-O, for example. Nothing makes a prettier picture than a shimmering, bright red mold of cherry Jell-O with golden sliced peaches glowing in its depths. And what a tangy, refreshing flavor. As tempting as the real ripe fruit itself, a solid, satisfying goodness that you'll want to enjoy again and again. No doubt about it, a dessert like that certainly adds the final glowing glory to any meal. So when you plan dinner tomorrow, plan to finish with a flourish with Jell-O in any of Jell-O's six delicious flavors. Only just be sure of getting genuine Jell-O when you buy. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, and Jell-O spells a treat. was Pinch Me, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, Don, Don, does Phil get here yet? Not yet, Jack. Oh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this being our first program of the new year, we bring you that holdover from 1939, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I didn't mean to interrupt you before, but I'm a little anxious for Phil to get here. He is not in a hall, is he? Mm, no, Jack, what's the trouble? Oh, no trouble, Don, that is, I hope not. You see, I made a wager with Phil on the Rose Bowl game last Monday, and he lost. He'll be so mad, he'll go nuts. Oh, so you bet a couple of bucks on Southern California, huh? A couple of bucks, nothing. I bet $50 on SC. 50 smackers. Uh, pardon me, I must be in the wrong studio. <laughs> Mary, come back here. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my risking $50. Of course, I was pretty sure that I'd win. I'll bet you wrote a suicide note just in case. <laughs> I did nothing of the kind. Anyway, Don, just wait till Phil gets here. I doubt if he even shows up. Oh, he'll show up, Jack. Well, don't start ribbing him or anything, because uh, I'll have a tough t enough time collecting as it is. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Did you enjoy the Rose Bowl game last Monday? I certainly did. I didn't see you, Dennis. Where were you sitting? Well, it was the darndest coincidence, Mr. Benny. You know, last Monday, I was 20 years old. Yeah? I had seats right on the 20-yard line. Well, well, that is a coincidence. They weren't very good, though. I missed half the plays. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, too bad you weren't Jack's age. You could have seen everything. <laughs> Mary, that may have been a brilliant remark, but it doesn't happen to fit. I was sitting behind the goalpost, way, way up in the 75th row. 75th row? Did you enjoy the game, Jack? Oh, it was all right till the last quarter. What happened then? My radio broke and the clouds rolled in. <laughs> What a seat I had. Did you have any bets on the game, Mr. Benny? Uh, just one, but I anticipate a bit of trouble collecting. You know, Dennis, I bet $50 with Phil Harris, and wait till you see him when he has to pay up. Oh, what a bum sport. You know, he's the kind of a fella that... Oh, quiet, Jack. Here he comes now. Oh, yeah. Watch me needle him. Uh, well, hello, gambler. How's the old Tennessee fan today? Fine, Jackson, and here's your 50 bucks. You deserve it, kid. You sure can pick him. Oh, boy, is he burned up. <laughs> You know, Jack, I looked for you right after the game. I wanted to pay you then. Oh, sure, sure. I bet you did. I can just see you. Well, <laughs> here you are, Jackson. Aren't you going to take the money? It's all yours, kid. Oh, boy, what a sore loser. <laughs> see what I told you, fellas? What's going on here? If you don't want it, I'll put the dough back in my pocket. You see? Backing out, eh? <laughs> I thought so. What are you talking about? I lost the bet and I want to pay off. Here's your $50. I won't take it. Why not? Because you're a welcher and you can't fool me. <laughs> That's why. Jack, you mean to say that you're not going to take the money Phil's offering you? No, I'm not. That's liable to knock the war right off the front page. <laughs> Listen, Mary, I wouldn't accept a dime from a guy that takes the attitude he does. Why, Jack, are you crazy? The man offered you the money four times. But he can do it like a gentleman. He doesn't have to come in here and throw it on the floor. Who threw it on the floor? It's right here in my hand. You can't bluff me, Harris. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. I'll collect from that guy if I have to attach his salary. 
I've met small timers before. But gee, Mr. Benny, I saw Mr. Harris offer you the money. He wants you to take it. Sure he wants me to take it. And you know why, don't you? Why? Because when I bend over to put it in my shoe, he'll kick me. <laughs> I'm wise. I know all the tricks. Sing, Dennis. It's about time somebody exposed that guy. Last night we met and I dream of you, yes, with a wind and the rain in your hair. There in the mist how you sighed when we kissed With the wind and the rain in your hair The rain was a song, the wind was a voice The night was dark and stormy But how could my heart ever be cold With your two arms to warm by Dennis Day and accompanied by a deadbeat and his orchestra. <laughs> and now, and now, ladies and gentlemen... What do you mean, deadbeat? Here's your $50. Take it. Don't rush me. I'll get it my own way. <laughs> and now, folks, if we can get back to the spirit of our program, tonight, the Benny Slot Machine players <laughs> will hit the jackpot with their version of Frank Lloyd's great production, that maritime epic, Rulers of the Sea. Now, I will play the part. But, Jack, last week you made a big announcement that we were going to do Golden Boy tonight. Well, we were going to do Golden Boy, Dom, but I've decided to let it go for a while. And I know why. Mary, that's not the reason. Anyway, Paul. Why the sudden switch? Don, please. Now, I will play the part. Come of... on, Mary, tell us. Why doesn't Jack want to do Golden Boy? Well. Mary. Here's what happened. <laughs> oh. A week ago, Saturday night, Jack called me up and asked me if I'd like to go over to the Wilshire Bowl for dinner, as Gladys had work. She did not. <laughs> anyway, we got to the bowl about 9 o'clock and had a table way in back where Phil couldn't see us. And just as we are finishing dinner, I... Well, do you like the food, Mary? Yeah. She is crowded in here, isn't it? It sure is. Hey, waiter, bring me another cup of coffee, please. I don't know about that, Mr. Benny. Go get it. <laughs> yes, sir. Hmm. Gee whiz, Jack. Just because a second cup of coffee is free, you don't have to have five of them. Mary, it all averages up. How many people even take the second cup? Cigars, cigarettes, and novelties. Cigarettes? Oh, girly, give me a cigar, will you please? Yes, sir. What kind? A couple of those Santa Fe Biltmores. By the way, what's that you've got on your tray there, tied up in that pink ribbon? That's a lock of Mr. Harris's hair. Fifty cents. <laughs> Well, I don't want it. You better take it. This is the last one left, and we don't shear him again for a month. <laughs> no, just thanks, just the same. Imagine that, Mary. Is that Phil Corny? Cigar, cigarettes, corn. Get in the mood, folks. <laughs> Selling locks of his hair now. Isn't that awful? Say, I wonder what time the floor show goes on. Oh, look, there's Mort Werner, Phil's announcer, getting ready to introduce Phil. Oh, yeah.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Wiltshire Bowl. And now, folks, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our master of ceremonies and comedian... Oh, boy. ...that maiden's dream on the beam, Phil Harris. How does he rate a reception like that? Well, Phil's very popular here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jello again, this is smiling Phil Harris talking. <laughs> Jello again, he got that from me. You remember me, folks, your favorite comedian and the star of that Paramount picture, Man About Town. Hmm. He got that from Rochester. <laughs> Quiet, I want to hear this great comedian. Hey, Mort. Yes, Phil? Who was that lady I seen you walking down the street with last night? That was my grandmother. Not bad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and they're laughing yet. Say, say, Phil, I heard you were in the hospital last week. Yes, I was, Mort. Pretty sick, eh? No, pretty nurse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, waiter, bring me another cup of coffee. I'm going to get even somehow. I'll have one with you. Pull up a chair, kid. <laughs> Mary. Mary, I can't understand why people laugh at Phil. His jokes aren't funny. They're happy because there's no cover charge. And that must be it. And now, folks, we'll be back in a little while with some sizzling dance music. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank heaven. Say, Mary, let's pay the check and get out of here. Okay. I'll match you this time. No. <laughs> No, tonight it's my treat. Come on, let's go. All right. Oh, Jack, look. Isn't that Barbara Stanwyck sitting over there? Where? Right over there at the ringside table. Oh, yeah, she's with another couple. I wonder where Bob Taylor is. I don't know. I'm going over and say hello to her. Do you know Barbara Stanwyck? Of course I know her. And say, Mary, I've got a great idea. As long as we're going to do Golden Boy next Sunday, wouldn't it be marvelous if I could get Barbara to play her original role? It sure would. I'm going right over and fix it. See you in a minute. You know, Barbara, it's a shame Bob had to work at the studio tonight. It certainly is, Barbara. Well, he's finishing a picture, and they're working overtime. <laughs> you know, Lillian, I was telling Bob only this morning that... Well, he... well. Hello, Barbara. Hello. As I was saying, Lillian, <laughs> uh, I told Bob well, only this morning that... It well, was well. How, how are you, Barbara? I'm fine, thank you. Gee, it's sure a surprise running into you here at the Wilshire Bowl. Where's Bob? He's busy at the studio. I expect him later. Oh. Are you working here? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I just dropped in for a cup of coffee. Are these folks relatives of yours? Oh, pardon me, I'm sorry. Mr. and Mrs. Kendall, this is Ben Burney. No, that's... <laughs> no, that's Jack Burney. I mean, Benny. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do? You know, Mr. Benny, I always listen to your program. Is Miss Livingston with you this evening? Yes, Mrs. Kendall. She's sitting right over there with the waiter. <laughs> <laughs> well, Barbara, it's... It's sure a surprise seeing you here. Uh, where's Bob tonight? I told you he was at the studio. Oh, oh, that's right. Busy, 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 huh? Yes, busy, busy, busy. <laughs> well, it's sure a surprise. Yes, sir. Oh, look, the orchestra's about to start a number. Would you like to dance, Barbara? Not that I know of. Oh. Oh, come on. Huh? All right, folks, grab your partners. We're going to play a little number entitled The Sun Shines Bright in My Old Kentucky Home Because There's a Big Hole in the Roof. Oh, brother. <laughs> come on, Barbara, let's dance. Come on. All right. Wait till I get my shoe on. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Barbara, you dance divinely. Thank you. But you're going a little fast, aren't you? Just hang on, Pappy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're priceless. See, isn't this swell, Barbara? See, I just love dancing. Do you always puff like this? <laughs> No, no, I'm just a little excited. You know, when I was a kid back in Waukegan, I used to... 
Oop, I tripped. <laughs> uh, sorry, Barbara. Oh, that's all right. Somebody must have shoved me. Yeah. So crowded. But you know, as I was saying, Barbara, when I was a kid in Waukegan, I used to... Oop! <laughs> I tripped again. Yeah. I don't know what's the matter with me tonight. I'm generally very graceful. In fact, I got medals for dancing. Well, take them off. They're tearing my dress. <laughs> oh, you have a marvelous sense of humor. See, Barbara, look at the way that guy leads an orchestra, how he loves to show off. I like his style very much. Hello, Phil. Well, well, Barbara, how are you, Bab? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, by the way, Phil, this is Jack Benny. How do you do? You work for me. <laughs> how do you do yet? See you later, Corny. You know, I call him Corny. What does he call you? He wouldn't dare. <laughs> Come on, Barbara. I've got something very important I want to ask you. Let's dance some more. One, two. So you see, Barbara, that would be a terrific novelty. What do you say? Well, I'd love to help you out, Jack, but do you think it would go over? Why, of course it would go over. Just imagine you playing your original role in Golden Boy on my program with me playing opposite you. Doesn't that intrigue you? Doesn't that do something to you? Doesn't that thrill you? Keep mentioning things. <laughs> Good. Then it's a deal. Now, let's see. When can we rehearse? Now, wait a minute. Now, how about rehearsing Tuesday afternoon at my house? Oh, oh, all right. Then it's a date. My house, 3 o'clock Tuesday. I must tell Mary. Oh, there she is dancing with the waiter. Oh, Mary! Mary! Don, Jack made a date with Barbara for Tuesday afternoon at his house. Did she show up? Sure she did. Then why isn't Jack doing Golden Boy tonight? Well, wait till I tell you what happened. Mary, forget it. I got over to Jack's house about a quarter to three, and you should have seen him. He was so excited, all he kept saying was, Rochester, have you fixed the sandwiches? Rochester, have you done this? Have you done that? Rochester, Rochester have you fixed the sandwiches? Yes, boss, here they are. Hmm. What's in them? This is some of that Thanksgiving turkey which we also serve for Christmas. <laughs> oh. That bird has made more farewell appearances than Harry Lauder. <laughs> well, I don't want to serve that to Miss Stanley. My goodness, haven't we got any peanut butter or something? <laughs> Yes, sir. Well, make some of those. And Rochester, when Miss Stanwyck arrives, uh, bring her right into the library here. Okay, boss. And oh, yes, take that copy of Shakespeare down from the shelf, dust it off, open it to Hamlet, and put it on the table. It'll make an impression. Uh-huh. Gee, I hope I look all right. What do you think of my new suit, Rochester? The coat's beautiful, boss, but don't you think you ought to put your pants on? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, get them quick. Are you in there, Jack? Yeah, but don't come in for a minute, Mary. I'm waiting for something. Here's your pants, boss. Thanks. Say, that's a mighty good-looking outfit. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. You ought to buy more brown suits, Mr. Benny. They flatter both of us. <laughs> Rochester, don't you dare put this on until it starts to shine. Mary, you can come in now. What was going on, Jack? My pants. <laughs> now, Mary... Just for today, I want you to do me a favor. Please lay off the wise crack, will you? Okay. But say, Jack, you ought to take that sign down from the front of your house. It looks awful. What sign? The one that says, Today in person, Barbara Stanwyck. <laughs> what? Rochester, did you put that sign up in front of the house? Yeah, I'll teach the neighbors to high hat us. <laughs> You're darn right. Leave it up. Now, Mary, when I'm rehearsing with Miss Stanley today, you can help me out by commenting on how good I am. Uh, what should I do? Well, when I finish a very dramatic line, you yell out, bravo. No, it'll impress Barbara. Bravo? What does that mean? Never mind what it means. Just say bravo. Why can't I say pew? <laughs> Don't you dare. 
Now, I want everything to be... That must... That must be her now. <laughs> answer the Rochester. I mean, answer the door, Rochester. Okay, boss. Oh, Jack, control yourself. I'm all right. Where's my cigar? In your ear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, remember, Mary. Good evening. May I take your coat? Thank you. Barbara, come right in. Well, this is a surprise. Surprise? Yes. I mean, that is, welcome home. I mean, make yourself at home. <laughs> I mean... You mean hello. That's it. <laughs> oh, by the way, Barbara, uh, this is Mary Livingston. How do you do, Miss Livingston? I knew Bob Taylor before you did. <laughs> Mary. Uh, don't mind her, Barbara. She's always like that. I know. She used to sell me hose at the May Company. <laughs> well, that's a good one. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Serves you right. Well, let's go on with the rehearsal. Did you bring the script with you, Barbara? Yes, and as the play is very long, I've selected one scene which I think would be ideal for both of us. Oh, you mean it's equally important? Yes. It's that scene where Lorna pleads with Joe to give up fighting and go back to his violin. I see. And I'm Joe. Unless you'd rather be Lorna. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, Joe is all right. I'm Joe. Hello, Joe. What do you know? I just got back. Mary, cut it out. <laughs> Well, Barbara, I think we'd better get going with our rehearsal. All right. Now, here's your part. It's on page 93. Hmm. Oh, yes. Well, what a beautiful copy of Shakespeare you have here. Are you fond of his plays? Oh, yes. I often while away an hour or so perusing Hamlet, Macbeth, As You Like It, The Tempest. Bravo! Not yet. <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm quite, I'm quite fond of Shakespeare. Well, that's that. Should I put it back on the shelf now, boy? <laughs> Never mind, Rochester. Bring in some tea and sandwiches. Yes, sir. Now, all right, Barbara, I'm, uh, I'm ready to rehearse. Let's take it from the top of the page here. The scene where I'm trying to get you out of the fight racket. Uh, you have the first line. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Joe, I'm going, Lorna. Don't read Joe. Just read the line. <laughs> oh, yes. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going, Lorna. Don't go, Joe. You must listen to me. When I first saw you, I didn't care what you did. I thought you were just a fighter. I didn't love you then. I didn't care whether you lived or died or what happened to you. I didn't care if I ever saw you again. I'm going, Lorna. No, Joe, you must listen to me. I love you now. You're part of me. Watching you become a fighter taught me something. I've seen you get hard-shelled and tough. Oh, you shouldn't be in the ring, Joe. It's not for you. You belong in your home. In your home with your violin. I'm going, Lorna. Oh, please, Joe. Please, Joe, if you love me, you'll listen to me. I know why you're doing this. You're bitter and callous and hard-boiled. But, Joe, don't you remember that night? You spoke of music and what it meant to you. How you loved your violin. You knew what was right then, how people should live. Oh, don't give up fighting. Please, please. I'm going, Lorna. <laughs> Jack, read that right. That's I'm going, Lorna. Well, I'm tired of saying it the same way. <laughs> See, it gets monotonous. The fine part. Well, you've got a very dramatic speech coming up. It's the next line. Oh, yes. I didn't see it. Go ahead, Barbara. What do you say? Oh, Joe, will you give up fighting? Joe, you don't need the money. It isn't the money. I got plenty. Bravo, and how? Mary. <laughs> I'm sorry, Barbara. I'll take it again. It isn't the money. I got plenty. Oh, Joe. Joe, you must give up fighting. Watch this, Mary. Give up fighting? Why, you were the girl that liked champions. You were Please, the... Joe. Don't try to get even with me. Well, I made up my mind to win the lightweight crown. But your heart's in music, Joe. You know that. I can't play anymore. I got the hands of a fighter. <laughs> They've been soaked in brine for a year, and they're as hard as nails. They're good for only one thing now, slugging. Slugging my way to the title. I tell you, Lorna, if Wait it's a it... minute, Jack. Wait a minute. Oh, that's awful. Why? What's the matter? You're supposed to be a fighter, not little Eva. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Barbara. I put a lot into that speech. 
I felt the part, and I was very emotional. I wasn't carried away. <laughs> you keep out of this. And go get the tea. He's right, Jack. Your performance wouldn't convince anybody. Now, Barbara, aren't you getting a little bit hasty? Gee, I might not be as good as your act, as a, an actor as your husband. But gee whiz, we can't all be tailors. Your father was. Quiet. <laughs> Now, give me, a, give me a chance, Barbara. I've never read this before. Uh, let's go back to my last line. Oh, all right. I'll try it once more. <clears throat> my hands are good for only one thing now, slugging. Slugging my way to the title. No, no, Joe, you must give up fighting. You can't talk me out of it, Lorna. I'm going. Don't go. Oh, don't go. Joe, please don't go. Take me in your arms. Kiss me. My darling. <laughs> How was that, Lorna? Oh, Joe. Joe, you must give up kissing. That's not in the script. <laughs> Anyhow, I can kiss better than that. I was a little nervous. Oh, Jack, it's no use. You're a nice fellow, but you're a comedian. We'd only make fools of ourselves if we tried to do this on your program. But, Barbara, it's only Tuesday. We got plenty of time to rehearse. Oh, no. Believe me, Jack, rehearsing won't help any. But, Barbara, if you'd only... Tea and sandwiches, folks! Tea and sandwiches! Tipping is un-American! <laughs> Rochester, will you have a cup of tea, Barbara? No, thanks, Jack. I'll just run along. He's not that bad. You can at least walk. Mary, no kidding, Barbara. Have a cup of tea and we'll rehearse some more. No, thank you. Some other time, Jack. Oh, Barbara, please. I already announced we were going to do Golden Boy, and I, I was going to spring you as a surprise. Well, let's wait till spring. Things are brighter then. Well, that's the way you feel about it. Thanks, just the same. You're welcome. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye. So long, Jack. So long. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, you can take that sign down now. <laughs> well, there she goes. And I'm going, too. Goodbye, slugger. Hmm. I can't understand why I didn't play that scene right. Yeah, I know I can do it. Rochester, read Miss Stanwyck's part, will you? Start right here. Okay. <clears throat> no, Joe, you must listen to me. <laughs> I made a mistake. I love you, Joe. You're a part of me. <laughs> I can't play my violin anymore, Lorna. I got the hands of a fighter. They've been soaked in brine for a year and they're hard as nails. They're good for only one thing now, slugging. Slugging my weight. So there you are, Don. That's the reason we're not going to do Golden Boy tonight. Well, that's a shame. It would have been a great show. Don't worry, Don. I've been soaking my hands in brine all week. I'll get her yet. Play, Phil. One thing Jell-O has always been famous for, ladies and gentlemen, is the wide variety of ways it can be served in desserts, salads, and many other grand gelatin treats. But did you know that you can also use Jell-O to make the finest fruit or vegetable relishes you ever tasted? For example, Jell-O cranberry relish. Bright crimson cranberries gleaming in a golden mold of clear lemon jello and marvelously easy to make. All you do is first dissolve one package of lemon jello in one third cup of sugar and one pint of hot water. Chill until slightly thickened and fold in two teaspoons of horseradish and two cups of raw cranberries, which have been put through the food chopper. Then mold and you have a delicious relish, a sprightly combination of delicate lemon jello and the spicy tartness of juicy, ripe red cranberries. Serve with roasts or cold meat. It lends a tasty tingle to their enjoyment. So tomorrow, order some lemon jello from your grocer and add an appetizing accent to dinner with Jello Cranberry Relish. Thank you, Barbara, and good night, everybody. J.E. Bell House. Oh. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>